Once Lupin comes back, the Black Snivy disappeared too. Ah, <laughs> uh, like, there he is. Our, our rest position, our rest position is usually like that. Enseñen la otra con el arco, como los arcos para arriba, como eh. so There's another, it's used also with a, with a bow like that. Sometimes they do that. But for this group, it's usually the other way. It's usually this way. Mm -hmm. uh, usually our trumpet players, our wrist position, it's the way you see. It's not like one guy this way and then a guy this way. Yeah, yeah. We're always thinking of what people are, are seeing, right? Uh, harp, wrist position. <laughs> he just stands there. <laughs> he just stands there. Uh, guitarron. One thing that I don't like, and, and I don't really, I don't stress it a lot, you know, with the guys, I don't like for their feet to be like this close together. Right. It's nicer for them to be, mm -hmm. you know, it just shows more pride. Yeah. It shows, even when you're playing violin, when you're here, when you arch your back a little bit, as opposed to just playing like this, it's a big difference. Parense como como tocamos, como me gusta que se pare. Huh? It's usually like that, right? Okay, parense directamente facing them without the turn and, and play like facing this way. It just doesn't look the same. Yeah, it doesn't. The other way looks, looks nicer. Like Lupe's smiling, he has the look. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, that's, that's something that we're always, always looking at. Now, there are places that we play where it's just acoustic, right? It's, it's acoustic balance where we do not have, we don't have sound. Like for instance, if we play, uh, no toquen los micrófonos, pónganse enfrente de los micrófonos, muchachos, por favor, sí. Enfrente de los micrófonos. Yeah. Eso sí, bueno, I'm going to use the harp right now because it's already mic'd up. Pero si yo digo que we're going to play, we're going to play Somos Novios, just, you know, it's impossible, right? ourselves. I, as, as a soloist, I play like half the volume, so you guys could be able to hear the strings, you could hear the strums. Now, if, if usually if I tell them, cuadro, no? Vamos a la gente, right? So, otra vez, somos novios, y ustedes hacen su cuadro. Sometimes there's confusion, like this morning right now. <laughs> nobody, nobody is really awake, you know, they're, they're waking up. But that's usually what we try to do, you know, and, and it's, if we, if we, if one, two, three guys come with an attitude of, I don't care, you know, it's, it's not a good thing. And we all have to come and try to work as a team and try to fill it. So once we start, then we try to balance ourselves better.
you understand why we like to balance ourselves? Because it helps the audio, you know, what you guys are listening to? Mm -hmm. 99% of mariachi groups really, they don't really care about that. You know, they want to go, they want to make their money, they want to leave. It's not about what are the listen, people listening to? You know, what are they listening to a balancing? But the mentalities of 99% of groups is, are not that. But for those of you that do work gigs on weekends, you guys know that, right? We want to go, we're going to play. And for a director, it's, it drives me nuts, <laughs> right? Because every time that we go and we touch people and people, they get touched by the group. They see the best that we could do as a group. There's a great chance that two of those people are going to tell more people mm -hmm. and more work comes to the group. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's very hard to inject it into professional musicians. You know what? It's, you know, like you got to leave doors open. You got to network. You got to make people feel that, that they're a part, a part of our family or a musical family. So how does it sound out there with the, with the stream? It sounds pretty neat, right? So it's sometimes we hardly ever do it. I mean, honestly, we're, we're usually like this. So we do another setup, you guys, come back. Vénganse, por favor. Vamos a hacer las dos líneas como normalmente hacemos. See? I love the way that though this engages See? the audience. This you is know? An, an, another way. When we don't have a lot of space, yo digo dos líneas, and usually the guys are over here, our first violin. Eric is usually over here. Adrián, Adrián is one of, the, one of the new guys. He's <laughs> so like, okay, where I go? Someone tell me, right? <laughs> So we're here, we always put the violins, obviously, uh, there. We try to put the harp in the middle. I think it looks nicer. So the guitar player has to pluck a little louder because he's further back, right? surroundings are as a group sometimes if, if they do go to a job they ask for six or seven guys but sometimes the repertoire changes right and we we start playing more polkas more traditional it's more of a traditional sort of setup seven guys and um, we play more instrumentals like la gruta la gruta mm -hmm. those of you who studied the gruta here yeah so our take on la gruta is a little bit different so voy a pedir que se, que se paren con me gusta que se paren un poquito toquen la gruta ¿Sí? You play the gruta? Huh? Oh, gosh. <laughs>
people have played that with three violins only, two trumpets. And the whole showmanship thing is, I mean, it's, it's so important also in mariachi. A lot of musicians don't like to, uh, don't like to say, okay, I'm gonna go do the gig, I'm gonna go do this thing, and that whole showmanship, me smiling in front of people. It's not important, it is important. Mm -hmm. you know, but also, it also is important when we're playing, right? And sometimes we have to concentrate a lot of them were playing and it's secondary, you know, for smiling or not. You know, I'd rather have you also play well, play with, you know, always be listening to each other. Right now, I'm, I'm listening to the rhythm section when they're playing. So, I'm, right away I'm listening. I'm hearing that because that's sort of guiding me for me. have the pitch right where it should be. And I'm also listening to the chords that they're playing. Toquen los acordes a la entrada, sí? Así a capela, puro violín, es one, two, three. You know, there's guy has to be the sensitivity, especially the violins, because there's always five, four, six violins, and it becomes more difficult, you know, for everybody to be on the same page. And <clears throat> that's, it's, it's such a huge responsibility for a leader, also. You know, sometimes they have to be aggressive in a good way, so everybody could feel like, okay, we got our leader and he's leading us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are leaders that say, oh, I don't, don't wanna get anybody upset. It's not about that. You know, it's about being professional and boom, that's our system. That's what we play, that's what we do. My trumpet section, I'm the leader, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, the guys, they really don't have a problem with it. A lot of times I'm turning around with us because I'm always listening to, to pitch. It helps me too stay in pitch. You know, I don't know. Did you guys hear the, the group pretty much in tune last night? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're trying to play as much in tune as we can. I got to listen to a recording also. They recorded that last night. So I got to see you soon. I noticed last night I was watching, you guys were constantly in communication with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a good thing. Well, right so now a little bit more because it feels almost like uncomfortable because we have a, a violinist that moved to Chicago. <clears throat> so our new violinist is Adrian, right? Adrian's been in the group for how long has he been in the group? He's been in the group a month. You, all the music that he's been learning in one month. And everybody's really, yeah. But you know, besides, besides Adrian being a very talented player, I mean, he's very well educated too. I and mean, tell him a little bit about, you know, your, your uh, I did an uh, undergrad on violin performance at Kelsey Long Beach and my uh, grad school on a viola performance. Yeah. Viola. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Adrian is, is, is a young man that, that uh, Eric would recommend. Hey, you know, we have a recording. Uh, Adrian is there. So he comes in, I mean, come in, no problem. Sees the music for the first time, and we're, you know, two, three takes, and then record. And yeah, that's super, super important. You know, who's been playing the last amount of time the violin, I think, has been Ricardo. Ricardo's been playing the. Uh, the less amount of time, right? So he's, he's more of a, of a, a musician that doesn't have that big, huge ma uh, musical background. It, it, it's more of a natural thing for him, and it's hard. He struggles. He goes, wow, this is like, everything's so complicated here. Go, yeah, it, it is complicated. It's not your normal, you know, okay, we're gonna do a triad, a very basic triad, and when we're doing strings, you know, we'll do something like, uh, and then play, oh, oh, so they have to retain and remember those harmonies. But if we're playing something like the Glenn Miller medley that we do once in a while, they have to retain those. It's not like a normal, okay, they're going from one to five to four, and pretty traditional. Sometimes we have to do this, so anybody that hasn't been exposed to that in this group, it's sort of like a, a wake up, a wake up call. But the great thing is that the attitude, I mean, mm -hmm. let me tell you, I mean, I don't think, in all the years that we've been together for 35 years, I haven't had such a great positive group of guys mm -hmm. play together like these wow. guys. Somebody new comes in and they're always willing to help. Always willing to yeah. during during their their during the breaks That's at cool. the restaurant. You know, some guys want to hey, I want to go have dinner during my break. 
But if the new guy, hey, can you record, you know, this song for me, my part? Because mm -hmm. that's their job, to ask. You know, and the guys aren't going to say, hey, come here, no, I'm going to teach you. No. The guys that have been here longest expect the new guys to ask them, hey, can you play? Because we don't have music for, what, maybe like 70% of the stuff we play, but I mean, maybe 30% of the stuff we do have music, written out music. But a lot of the stuff is traditional when we play, you know, so they have to sort of record our shows, record their parts. It's always part of that professionalism. But also, even when we sing, si cantamos la feria de las flores, me gusta cantar la vida. Me gusta cantar a viejo porque vuelan mis cantares y digo lo que Siento por toditos los lugares. Aquí vine porque vine a la feria de las flores. No hay cerro que se me empine, ni poco que se trying to hear the balance and where everybody's at. Sometimes it changes. Like I said, there are only four violins, so sometimes Lupe might have to sing third or second voice. He might have to change the third or second. Eric might have to sing first. Sometimes he has to second or third. We're always constantly changing and seeing what our balance is. You know, if I say, este, Guti, vente para acá, Guti. Adrián, vente para acá, Fernando, aquí en el centro. Si? Toca el son de la negra, si. Una segunda, tercera. Up to there? No, sorry, take Freddy. Toca primera. Toca segunda, o toca segunda y tú tocas tercera. ¿Ah? 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 Yeah. So, we always have to have to have that option where one is changing the first, one is changing the second. Mm -hmm. On the traditional stuff, we don't have too much of that problem. And I say, Lupe, ven, toca. Lupe usually plays third here, ¿verdad? ¿verdad? A ver, toca segunda, toca segunda, ¿verdad? Tú toca primera, Eric toca tercera. Eric should be our first violin, ¿verdad? ¿Va? ¿Venga? ¿Márcales? this kind of combination mm -hmm. but they still have to know that, that traditional songbook yeah. that mariachis have they have to know first second and third violin parts that is that's sort of like the ultimate you know one as a director you get a violin and said uh, I'll ask what do you play if they say I play first okay this guy's not the guy for my crew <laughs> he goes what do you play what do you what do you want me to play I'll, I'll, I could you know I play third pretty good second my my strength is third but I do play all three, the traditional stuff. That's what I love to hear. Yeah. That's what I love to hear. But somebody says, oh, I only know second. I go, dude, I go, <clears throat> come on. You know, sometimes when I, when I need a first, and you're here, and, and I, you know, I need that flexibility in the violin section. That's the hardest thing, I think, in the violin section. In the rhythm section, I think, ¿cuánto tiempo tienes, Pique? A little over a year, in Felipe. <laughs> yeah? So he's play, been playing vihuela for a while, but I mean, he plays guitar very beautifully too. You know, modern music, he could accompany himself just mm -hmm. alone with a guitar. He's a very good guitar player. But him coming into the group, it's he comes and okay, there's a system of playing. His job is sort of to pick up that kind of system, and my job as a director is to 
to see what his strength is and to try to feature him there. You know, so he's, he's got an awesome left hand, right hand. If you saw yesterday at Cascabel, I mean, he, he does a lot of things oh, with, yeah. with the Vihuel. I mean, he does some positions that are pretty cool. But for me, what's more important is that he keeps good tempo together with Chewy. You know, so if we're playing, if I play a Rey, huh? Good? In Do? Right? We locked in already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So if I play a Rey with a different tempo, they got to listen to where I'm, where I'm at musically. It's lower, but right away they locked in with me. With the two quarter notes that I played, mm -hmm. they already heard what the tempo was. Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. If I play it faster, mm -hmm. right? Right? so their job is like, you know, what kind of mood does Jose come? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the tree tells me, he goes, you know, today you played it a little faster than, than yesterday. I go, I go, but we played it together, right? <laughs> but that's the, the whole idea, right? To play, to play it together, right? And uh, I mean, obviously, vocally, we always depend on Lupe. You know, we depend on Lupe. Ricardo's a strong vocalist. Gustavo's a strong vocalist. Fernie's a strong vocalist. Adrián nos ayuda a nosotros también in the, the trio. He helps us a lot in the trios. Right now, he's just concentrating on his playing. To be honest with you, Eric is a strong. <coughs> I hardly ever put him to sing, but Eric actually sings very pretty. But he, <laughs> but. But but he's really good at harmonizing. Like I, I think yesterday he did some. What were we doing there? Was the Lara thing? He's never sang those trios with us. <laughs> really? Never. Because we had to fill in what the other, <laughs> what the other guy, the other guy that was in here, Joaquin, and then we played another song where he came in, and I was oh, looking yeah. at him. I go, <laughs> they, you know, he was one of the songs, right? And he was he was singing a song that. He's never really sang it that medley yet, but I, I count on him like he has a lot of experience. He knows a ton of songs. And I knew he would know the lyrics to that song, right? But still, we were sort of nervous for him. We go, oh man, I go, he's so used to accompanying that part. Like, por tu culpa, mujer, por tu culpa. But it came out okay. And Eric did the trio, came out okay. And he's just hearing, remember I told you guys when we were, I go, how do you do trios? I go, we're just hearing the progressions. And that's, that's, that's just what we do. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's just what we do. We sort of try to hear it. Uh, that right, por favor? Dicen que la distancia es de techo. Pero no lo toquen, eh? Just sing with the first voice. Okay? I don't know if he knows the lyrics, but no, I don't know the words. Uh, pero canta la tercera, no? Okay. This is Father and Son here, by the way. Father and Son. Dice que la distancia es el olvido, pero yo no consigo esa razón, porque yo seguiré siendo el cautivo. De los caprichos de tu corazón, supiste esclarecer mi pensamiento. Me diste la verdad que yo soñé. I mean, we're trying to fill in. Mm -hmm. Here's the lyric. We're trying to fill no, in no. the harmony, <laughs> right? And my my hope is that the first voice always stays in pitch, right? Yeah. Always stays in pitch, right? <laughs> no, no, no. It, yeah, it's, it, it's. I mean, you know, when the nerves kick in, we always tend to laugh. Yeah, yeah. Those are nerves, right? But we were, it's, it's, it's sort of nerve wracking. So you can't tell Tercera Lupe? Dicen, Rey, Miami. Dicen que la distancia es el olvido, pero yo no concibo esa razón, porque yo seguiré siendo el cautivo de los caprichos de tu corazón. Supiste esclarecer mi pensamiento, me dice la verdad que yo soñé, ahuyentaste de mí los sufrimientos en la primera noche que te amé. Hoy mi playa se viste de amargura. Right? So we're always trying to, mm -hmm. to cover because we already sort of hear the, the progressions that, are, that the rhythm section is, is playing. And these are all the things that happen in mariachi that sometimes in workshops we don't really talk about. We right. just sort of do it automatically when we go out there and play. And it's fun when you have sort of a group of guys that are, that, hey, let's do this trio. We used to do that with my family a lot. I mean, like 30 years ago, we used to play, it was my father singing third or second, or Pedro, my brother, singing first. 
or me singing third or second, we always switch around and we improvise trios. It's, it's fun. It's really fun. There are certain places that we get to do that. But just, just remember that the mariachi, it is primarily about playing well and singing well, but it's also very important to have that the professionalism and the showmanship when we're playing, right? <coughs> so it's almost tocando son de la negra, tocando son de la negra, por favor, muchachos, y balanceense, sí, por favor. Ya? Venga, venga. Va. other we're sort of feeling where the accents are that they're that they're sort of it becomes contagious when you're kind of that pulse, mm -hmm. that pulse, and mm -hmm. we're just trying to build as, as much as we can. Can you play that one? Yes. With the pulse of them, eh? connect with the pulse, whether it's a bolero, whether, whether it's a son. In boleros, I usually try to, to, to add some music. Tocamos más allá, for instance. Más allá, por Lo bello y 
precioso estás tú estás tú más allá del sueño que has visto estás tú estás tú más allá de la luna más bella y el templo de una estrella attitude that it's me first mm. you gotta follow me everybody and they're not listening sort of to the faults of the group of everybody playing the boings where they feel comfortable bowing also we can be playing super fast it's never gonna work out it's always that team 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 effort team effort mm. team effort so it's that's usually that's basically the system that that I use that I've used for four years you know so a, a lot of the younger guys that, that are part of this group now I mean one way or the other you they listen to our records and stuff like that. And they say, you know, one day I want to be in that group, I want to work with the guys and stuff like that. My job is sort of make it pleasant for them to, to work, mm -hmm. to, to want to play, to, to say, I like to play in that group. I like to play in the group. You know, we've been very blessed lately. We're working a lot, you know, and uh, these are the toughest times to get up in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, we do appreciate that. We were walking outside of the Fremont Street last night. <laughs> <laughs> Can, can, what, can I ask? <laughs> what is that? Oh, dude, all right. You're going home with money in your pocket. You want 200 bucks? You want 200 bucks? All right. Yeah, 200 bucks. Cool. Can I ask a question? Um, what to engage your audience? Have you ever had a tough audience that you have to really work extra hard to get Every them? Audience is different. Yeah, I mean, last night they were so with you, but I mean, w when you have an audience that's a tough audience, is there some you strategy know, you use? Usually to... in the theaters, we don't have a problem because uh -huh. if somebody buys their ticket to go see us play, they're already pumped up to come in here. Well, that's true. Where it's di difficult, it's when we're doing when we're not touring or we're not out. We're at the restaurant, and that's that's our job there at the restaurant. Right. And if we approach it like a job, it doesn't become fun. We have to approach it as a chance to play together, you know, to have fun, to enjoy what you're playing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, it's difficult to go and play at, at the restaurant, and it's that routine, that routine, and the routine. But I mean, who plays classical music? How many times do you have to play a certain concerto yeah. or a certain piece with a certain orchestra? Oh, we're gonna play that one again, okay? We only have this repertoire, and we're just going to play those pieces. Yeah? When you're at your restaurant, or you're someplace where maybe the audience is not engaged in as much, mm -hmm. do you guys go out and shake a few hands and say hello? And That's even a struggle, let me tell you. But we, we've been getting a little bit better at that, you know. I tell you, I always tell the guys, no, but you're most, most of the time, if I'm not there, Chewie knows what kind of music to play to get them engaged with us, you know. But sometimes, <laughs> but sometimes, yeah, it, be, it, it becomes a routine. It becomes a routine. And I know the young guys, sometimes they want to play this song, that song. And I go, it would be great to play that song, but we have to practice it first. Mm -hmm. You know, because we have a certain standard you know, of, of presenting ourselves. Or I like to think that we do. You understand what I mean? So, uh, yeah, we could improvise a whole bunch of songs, but they won't come out 100% awesome. Yeah. You know, we 
We have to brush it up a little bit during the break just say, hey, let's go with a door, blah, blah, blah. This fill, this is what we do. But uh, so, so when you guys are doing your solos and you come forward to sing, Fernie, you know, you guys, and you step forward, do you sing it the same? I mean, do the hands go up at this word? I mean, do you sort of have it choreographed, what you're going to do, where the hand goes up, when the hand goes down? Not it's really. just how it takes you, or what? Me, personally, I just try to um, connect with the lyric, and wherever that takes me, and every day it's different because you're, you feel different, sometimes <clears throat> it'll connect differently with you, so... That's what I try to do. Yeah, and, and, I, and I see it like when he goes up there and he, and he performs, it's never the same. Never uh -huh, the same one. Really? The same thing with I used Gustavo. to be like that. The same thing with Gustavo. <laughs> now, my job is when we're, when we're playing, or even at the restaurant, you know, at the restaurant, I say, I know we're, we're on a stage, but still there are people sitting over here and mm -hmm. people sitting over there and in the middle. So you're going to start in the middle, then once in a while come over here. They like to know that you're singing. To them. Yeah, 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 truly. You know, then, the, then, then there's the, the Musica del Medio where we play, and move over here, you know, with the mic. Sing to the other people. They like that. Yeah. That's part of it, you know. Right. And sometimes you don't know how difficult it is to get it in somebody's head for them to say it's important. It's important. I mean, you're not doing me a favor. You know? I mean, I could really go there and say, You're working for me, I'm paying you. I mean, are you interested in working here? I, yeah, yeah. I hate to go there. But it's it's like, you know, you tell somebody you want them to be professional. I've had guys like that in my career. Where, you know, it's just about them. Forget everybody. They have their chip on their shoulder. It's like, I try to be an example. Mm -hmm. And the mariachis are a very special breed, let me tell you. You know, at the professional level. Yeah. Well, you work with some professionals, right? Mariachis could be a very special breed sometimes. But then, you could also be very fortunate and very blessed. Like I said, I mean, for the most part, with us, you know, it's a good chemistry. It's good for the most part. They're very, very flexible. If we say boom, sometimes there's a communication, lack of communication sometimes, and it's sometimes not their fault, or sometimes it's not our fault, right? But for the most part, it, it's gotten better through the years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to, yeah, it's a respect for the audience, you know? I noticed, you know, you improvised a little showmanship when the mic wasn't working, your brother came over saying, yeah, yeah. You, you put your arm around the violin player, and so on, mm -hmm. on that mic with him, you know, it looked like... Yeah. And I was know. still trying to balance, right, because... Uh, my my voice is a little louder than Eric's voice, but Eric is, it's really it's cool. <laughs> it's very soft. The, the, Eric has a soft voice, but Eric is, sings very in tune. For me, it's it's cool to sing with him because he's in tune. It, it's a good a good guide, a good guide for me. You know, when you play with somebody that's in tune, it's awesome to play like that. You know, it's not it's not too too nice to be playing with somebody that's out of tune. No. <laughs> Oh yeah, the Con Salmer Institute. And so the clapping was very polite. Uh -huh. People were very, very nice uh -huh. in Indiana. But it was very polite at the beginning. That's and what they then know. You played your show and it was crazy. I can't tell you how many people they pulled me up on stage. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people came up to me afterwards all through the week. Every I mean, saying, first of all they knew my name. And they said, you know, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. We've never heard of mariachi. Uh -huh. I mean they in Indiana. In Indiana. You know what I mean. Not a diverse crowd. Not a diverse yeah, crowd at all. Not, not, I mean, not yeah, we had some jazz teachers that came up to me and they say, you know what, man? Man, I heard some of the jazz language in your chords and your progression. It's so nice to, to they, they, they were, I mean, I got excited hearing them talk about the Greco. I felt so good and so proud of my guys. But if you notice in Indiana, our show was a little different than last night. Yes. In yeah, Indiana, we weren't saying, Me cansé de rogarle. We knew nobody spoke Spanish, right? We're gonna, Come on, sing with us. No. We, were gonna sing. <laughs> we, we okay. sort of kept away from that. Right? But the point is, they were on their feet at the end, and they're cheering oh, and that's clapping, great. and I, you know, the feedback was like... We got converts, I think. Yeah. 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 It was That was a fun thing to do. Yeah. It really was. In fact, one of the kids for Spanish uh, Heritage Month dressed up like Jose Hernandez. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm like, who's your hero? Hernandez. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, my God. What kind of advice would you have for, you know, sixth, seventh grade kids who are just enamored with mariachi, you know, to keep them excited about, and 
through the hard times, you're gonna feel like your first stone, and you're like, oh my God, I can't do this. You know, I think the perfect people to, to ask, uh, honestly, are, are uh, for instance, Gustavo, who was part of the foundation group that we had oh, for my yeah. foundation 1991. He was, I think, the first generation of students, probably that. Him and his two sisters, I played with Reinas, with the all female group that I had. Uh -huh. um, uh, but he could tell you more this, you know, what, what it was like going. Uh, I, I'd say, you know what, it's, it's like, if they're amazed with that, it was the same as me. So, uh, what I wanted to strive for is just practice, 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 so I can get in this group, you know? So, I guess just say practice, 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 practice. And mm -hmm. I mean, and if they come up to us, I mean, we're always nice to everybody. We try to be at, at least nice and talk to everybody. So, I mean, it would it would help for them to meet us, maybe, and, and, well, and talk to, to us. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell them how we, we can do that. We can. Yeah, yeah. We, we do that. Sometimes we do outreach, you know. Sometimes we, mm -hmm. together with, with, with our agent, you know, where we wherever we go, there are a lot of groups. I think we did it in Oregon, right? In Portland? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Eugene? You, we yeah, a couple yeah, of the groups yeah. there. Uh, and you're going to do they, it in they, Scottsdale? They, they, came to, uh, yeah. they came to, actually, to our sound check. I know we're going to be in Scottsdale, so you're going to take your kids to, to the Performing Arts Center. So they're going to they're going to sit in during our sound check. Yeah, to me it was also as well. I mean, he would talk to all of us as well. So when he would talk, it was like. And we had that yearly concert, you know, where, where we featured uh, the first batch of kids that we had. I think we had like about 40 students or something like that. And it was really cool to have them. Ricardo Montalban, when oh, he, was, yeah. he was our the speaker for our first show. Uh, I think the second year I took. Lola, Beltran, Lucha Villa, Miguel Aceves Mejia, I took three, all three of them. And they went to support my foundation, which was just awesome. You know? But all, these guys were very young, they were little kids. No kids. And I think Adrian was part of our foundation too. Of, of, yeah. Adrian, were you? Yeah, yeah and he was part. He told really? me, yeah, I was in the school of attorney still with you guys. I go, you were? Okay. <laughs> cool. But yeah, it, it's really cool. You know? And we did a little wedding so that Mexico, I remember, I think Gustavo was part of it, Eric was part of it. But they were still doing, Eric was still doing his classical music, and it, I, I mean, I wasn't really brought up playing classical music, but I, I don't even know what goes through your mind when you're, when you're really like, your teacher, your violin teacher is telling you to play this way, and then in, in mariachi, you're being pulled this way, <laughs> as a kid, that must be very confusing, I would assume, right? Mm -hmm. but does that happen, did that happen to you, sir? Um, well, I didn't really have teachers growing up, no. so, but, until college. Until college. Oh, so in a way to help, but Eric had teachers things since the age of what, eight, you know? Nine? No, I saw when I was five. Five? Um, <laughs> can't tell right now, but um, I actually don't think that that, that applied that applies to violinists because um, there's a certain age when you're I think the majority of people know when you play the violin it takes you about six about half a year, maybe to three quarters of a year to actually make, um, take out sound of the, the instrument without that, that's, that scratch, that scratchy noise. Mm -hmm. So for there to be a consistent clarity. Um, so when they tell you, my you play like, like dig in, there's something about having studied that, um, that's always gonna prevent you from sounding that, that real rustic type of quality. Um, but technically it doesn't, it doesn't affect you at all. Cause I had teachers in, since that was my, my foundation when I played my Diaji, um or when I was my teacher, it was a, a, never an issue because I was I had other things I was doing apart from that, and my tone and that that kind of foundation was already being set before I even started getting involved in my Diaji. I think it applies more to trumpet players because of the way they the, the vibrato um, and the attacks. Yeah, I think it's a much more uh, of a significant yeah. issue with them as opposed to us. I don't think it was ever anything. Anything that my teacher told me about because I was studying something totally different, I would learn a couple of songs. And could, I think it's more applies to trumpet. Could, could you demonstrate though what you like, like a classical approach and then the mariachi approach? That what, if there you think there is a difference at all? Well, I think uh, I think like the negra is a good uh -huh. uh, example. Uh, we all have to. It's a very energetic song. Right. The majority of times when we're playing at the restaurant, if my dad's not there, or my mom's not there, if if Jorge and I are in charge. I pretty much always start with that one because that one's an easy one. It's good to warm up fingers if you haven't warmed up yet. Mm -hmm. And it's very energetic, but the, the I think the one of the key principles of playing that song is um, you always want to come in very energetic. You want to really... I'm putting a lot of weight on the bow, but I'm pulling it fast enough 
so it doesn't sound yeah 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 sometimes gotcha. that happens i know a lot of guys um in other groups that play very well um that didn't study but they have an innate ability for the, the instrument but they sound a little rasposo a little scratchy when they play but it's a part of the characteristic of music i, I don't think i've ever really had uh if anything that there's only digging more and digging more because it's it's too like it's too classical well clear sometimes uh, yeah yeah um but that's kind of a somewhat of an obstacle that you're going to run into when you have that like bowing you know i had a violin uh, professor of a violin she told me uh you know the difference between sounding when you project your sound if you're behind like a concert violinist and they're projecting their, their their tone you know they put the ball in the string and they put a certain amount of weight and then they pull now if you're behind them you might hear a little of the scratches but by the time it projects out to people you don't hear that uh -huh. um a lot of times when you hear people that that more mariachi based they don't have that much of the foundation you'll hear a little of that that they put a lot of weight on the bow, a lot of weight. I'm going to end this because it's hard for me to do. <laughs> they put a lot of weight on the bow, and but they don't pull the bow fast enough. So you end up hearing. And my teacher, that professor told me, she said, the key is to put enough weight on the bow and pull it fast enough so you have a big tone and you have a, a nice clear tone. The, the quality of sound doesn't get um, um, distorted distorted or, or hindered by. by you know, yeah, gotcha. So I, I think uh, when you have a foundation of, of technique uh, a little bit or a lot, that's just going to help you play more. Yeah. For the violin, I think for the trumpets, I think that's where they can really get confused. Like the the way they that they're vibrato, something the mariachi trumpet, they you know they, they use their lips. Um, yes, we do. Classical trumpet, they, they actually like. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> um, in, in classical trumpet, I think they actually move the. Tr it, it's weird. I think that's where they get a little bit. That might be a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Okay. Good answer. Violin. Oh my God. That is like the most difficult. <laughs> yeah. My dad was a violinist. So. Uh, I teach uh, fifth and sixth grade kids, and they're playing classical trumpet. And I think one of the most difficult things for me to do is to get fifth and sixth grade boys to come into my choir. Oh, to sing. Senor Pavarotti, I mean, uh, Senor Pavarotti. <laughs> no. No? No. Did you get any kind of training? Uh, from, my, from my father. He's a good singer, so I learned from him. But any of you sing when you were younger? In a choir? In a choir at all? No. No? Well, I killed that idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I the thing is, that's what I tell you about mariachis, is that we sort of grow up listening, listening and listening, and it's just something that we just have already in our ears. You're yeah. thrown into it. Like, the, yeah. you haven't sang yet? Oh, Senor Rey, and they put you in front of everybody, and it's very, yeah. it's very uncomfortable. It's super uncomfortable. <laughs> Especially when, like, I'm not much of a singer. So they put me, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm over it already, because they did that to me when I was 18 years old, but, and that's pretty old. I was 18, <laughs> but other, it's, it's very awkward to be in, super awkward, because people are looking at you, and you're like, <laughs> well, I have two questions actually. Okay, uh, when you perform, when you go to a show, mm -hmm. to restaurant, do you have a, a list of songs? No, not at the restaurant, no. It depends how we feel the audience. Ah. You know, we want to get up. I mean, there are certain songs that we know, I mean, they have to be dead if they don't respond to certain songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My job, which is uh, it's sort of sad to say, but my job and their job is to try the, to get the people to consume. Mm -hmm. You know? The other I'll say that. I'll say that. The other no, no. Is how many songs Business. do you do? I mean, we don't count the songs. We, we have no, no clue. I mean, how many songs by memory? We, we, uh, we don't even know. Like we don't know. We have no clue. How many songs do you have? We have, we don't know. Just a lot. <laughs> yeah. We've never really sat down to wait. We, we, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know you, you play with all very busy between gigs and traveling and recording. How do you manage your time to, to be very, you know, to play very precise? Well, you know, we work together four nights a week for the most, the ones that work this the less, for instance, Luca, he's in San Diego, mm -hmm. and Luca's a full time teacher at Sweetwater, uh, Sweetwater School District. Right? Yeah. So, so it's, it's harder for him to come in. I mean, we feel it as, as a section, 
you know, that he doesn't play with us all the time. Because when you work together all the time, you're very sharp, you know, your bowings, and it, it's very, very difficult. You know, but for the guys that, that do work together all the time, there, there is no problem. I mean, we, we try to practice one day a week, and it's like looking at new music that I wrote for them, or polishing up some old stuff. Like right now, what we want to do, what I want, need to do with the guys right now, we have to polish up a lot of the old polkas and other sonis that we haven't played in a while. That that we need, we need to polish up a lot of that stuff because we don't want to lose that. We still want to play a lot of the polkas and a lot of the sonis. Mm -hmm. What is the foundation? Do you guys come from families that play mariachi? Uh, pues algunos, like Ricardo, he, uh, tu papá tocaba el mariachi o tus tíos? Pues, sí. En, en mi familia, pues mi papá, mis, los, los, mis tíos, por parte de mi papá, pues tengo mujeres también, tías, prima, mis abuelos también. His uncle used to play with me too. You know? Oh, okay. Well, not with me, with the group. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. It's it's early. Music. <laughs> This is being broadcast it's, it's early on. early in the morning. Okay, I want to make, make a His brothers, his <laughs> grandfather. He comes from a long line of musicians too. Lupe, woo, we go back. His uncle used to play with my father in, in the 60s with Maria Chiagina. Really? And his grandfather used to probably play with my grandfather in oh. Jalisco. Bueno, yo empecé a tocar en, en grupos profesionales a los, en el 70, 1970. Pero mi abuelo y el papá de mi abuelo tocaron la Sierra del Tigre allá con su abuelo. Entonces, It's because you know, originally this music was really passed on from family to family. Right, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. And most of the families would say, oh, you're my daughter. No, 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 no. you don't play. You don't play my dad. It's just for men. Mm -hmm. But uh, Fernando, what did I tell you? Nothing. <laughs> that, Nobody. Now, now there is a, there's a great example of mariachi education. He grew up in Tucson. He was part of Changuitos Feos too. Sí. Uh, Gilbert. So that's, that's you know, it, it's so, sort of like a whole new generation of musicians that don't come from mariachi families, but they learn the music. And they love it. Through the way that all of you are yeah. teaching this music, which is he's, awesome for the music. He's, the, he's your kid right there. Right there. Yeah, yeah. there's your kid. Yeah. 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 Um, my dad exposed me to mariachi music. He actually started with uh, Tonti's father. My dad. Yeah. My mom was a cantante. Y toda su familia también mariachis y músicos de orquesta y de banda y muchas cosas en México. Yeah, his mother was a singer and his, his dad and, and his uncles, yeah, they were like in orchestras and stuff like that. He's, he looks like he's 16 or something. Everybody tells me he's, totally. he's like 16. I go, he's, he's, the, he's the, the, the Mexican version of Justin Bieber. Ah, <laughs> Justin Bieber. Yeah. Bueno, pues yo soy, creo que la cuarta generación de mi familia de de músicos de mariachi, pues. <laughs> so, um, I, come from, I come from a really big family, but none of them are mariachi musicians. Um, I had an uncle that taught me guitar when I was in junior high. I actually started on trumpet. I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> so I switched to hard, but yeah, it's, it's just going to, you know, growing up in public school, uh, uh, public education, Uh, band, orchestra. We sort of introduced work, mariachi in, in, in his hometown because yeah. we, we, what was it, like 1988 or something, like 89 maybe? 80, 89. I, I, he was one of my trumpet students. I think it was 91. <laughs> wow. I was, I, was, I was like six or seven. I was seven or eight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> musicologist, it's great, right? It's great that he knows a little bit about the trumpet, yeah. right? Because he could. Yeah. Talk about it. Yeah, and, I mean, and especially for like to, to, to encourage your kids too. Like, it's it's great when you're in college, like a weekend job. It's awesome. And um, yeah. And, but you're studying musicology, right? Ethnomusicology. Yeah, ethnomusicology. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, I started in middle school in the mariachi program. Yeah. So, I have no musical roots. No musical. He is not a rose 